name is Glenn Raglan, and I'm one of the principals of Versana Systems. With me, I have Rick Gonzalez, our Chief Architect for Stock and Roll. Our objective for today's webinar is to provide an overview of the challenges and issues associated with tool and equipment management experienced by construction companies, tool rental companies, and turnaround projects. Once we have reviewed these challenges, I will briefly discuss how we address them using Stock and Roll, and then I'm going to turn it over to Rick Gonzalez, who's going to do a demonstration of our Stock and Roll solution. But before we begin, I'd like to provide a very quick introduction to Persona Systems. Persona Systems has been in business for 11 years, and although our headquarters are in Houston, Texas, we have an office in Atlanta, Georgia, and in addition, we have employees in Louisville, Kentucky, and De Detroit, Michigan. Our mission is to provide our customers with turnkey solutions to efficiently and effectively manage their assets and inventory. Stock and Roll, our tool and equipment management solution, is just one solution towards fulfilling that mission. In addition, Persona Systems offers asset and inventory management solutions for warehouses, laydown yards, work in process, and field services, just to name a few. And although Persona is only an 11-year-old company, Stock and Roll and some of our key employees, like Rick Gonzalez, came to us as part of our acquisition of DataScan Technologies back in 2007. As a result of our experience, and as a result, our experience in tool and equipment management goes back for 19 years to 1997, when DataScan Technologies co-developed Stock and Roll with Kellogg Brown and Root. Since then, the team has been continuously working with the industry to enhance and optimize the system. With many of our customers requiring real-time inventory and asset management, the needs for mobile solutions is imperative. As a result, reliable wireless network connectivity, whether it be Wi-Fi, mesh, point-to-point, point-to-multipoint, or even cellular, or a combination of all of the above, is imperative to supporting our solutions. So as you can see, even our wireless networking service line is in support of our mission. Our primary customer base tends to be com companies with complex operations. Whether the complexity is due to the physical environment, geographic dispersion, or both, Persona has the expertise and experience to assist you with your asset and inventory management and wireless needs. Right after our acquisition of DataScan, I had the privilege of getting to speak with the team that conceived and developed Stock and Roll. Pat Doyle, one of the members of KBR, summarized the reason at a macro level with this quote. He went on to say that a loss, whether it be time, labor, and or replacement costs, occurs every time a tool is not available when needed. For KBR to maintain its competitive advantage, effective tool and equipment management is a critical component to ensuring that they complete their projects on time and on budget. If we further explore the challenges and issues, we see that tools and equipment are typically tracked to a project work order or cost center, removing accountability from the individual receiving them. As a result, the industry is rampant with tool and equipment theft and tool hoarding due to lack of visibility and individual accountability. This leads to the next problem, that a significant amount of time and money goes into looking for misplaced, lost, or stolen tools and equipment. A traditional paper-based approach to managing tools and equipment will see most jobs lose between 8 to 15 percent of their tools and equipment. Handwritten logs also significantly increase the time it takes to issue and return tools and equipment, which in turn increases the cost of the project, reducing overall profitability. A paper-based issue and return process can see most workers waiting in line on average of 30 minutes a day. At an average labor rate of $75 per hour, that adds up to a lot of money very quickly. These logs also make the billing process a manual exercise increasing the time it takes to invoice your customers and leaving you open to human error. And trying to pull a history of asset utilization by item, person, project, company is darn near impossible with paper records. Even if you can do it, it will take a significant amount of time and money. But all of these issues ultimately lead to the, big, lead to the biggest problem of all, delayed projects and ultimately customer satisfaction issues. If it wasn't already hard enough to track what was issued to whom and when, keeping track of service schedules and employee certification exacerbates the problem even more. In 2012, U.S. workplaces reported 2.8 million injuries. 
in 2014, there were 4,679 workers killed. That's an average of 90 per week. As a result, regulatory requirements on the industry continues to increase. With regulation increasing, it is a fact that for a large project, handwritten logs are just no longer feasible. As a result of the increased regulations and concern for their employees' safety, the industry as a whole is taking the necessary steps to ensure safety and compliance. Should an unfortunate incident occur, your company will most likely not only be held to the regulations, but also compared to your peers to see if you're complying with industry standards for tracking and enforcing your maintenance and repair schedules. To complicate the situation even further, you will need to track and store compliance certificates for your tools and equipment and your employees. You will have to be able to prove your processes and procedures enforce the recommended inspection, calibration, and maintenance schedules and employee certification and training. There are a lot more challenges and issues in the industry, but these highlight the key challenges. So how does Persona solve these challenges and issues? How do we help you move from the old ways to the new? We do it with stock and roll, providing complete tool and equipment control, ensuring that not just the right tool, but that a safe tool and a trained employee gets to the right place at the right time. Persona believes the time to create accountability and visibility is at the point of issue and return. At these points, we can create the accountability by tracking tools and equipment to an individual. At these points, Stock and Roll knows what tools and equipment are in the tool rooms or tool trailers if you're mobile. Stock and Roll tracks the status of the tools and equipment. It knows if they are available to issue, out for service, damaged, lost, or disposed of. When the tools and equipment are issued, Stock and Roll can tell you who were they issued to and at what time and by whom, what project they are being used on, and if being tracked, the specific work location or work order. If that isn't enough, Stock and Roll gives you the ability to track five additional user-definable fields. When the tools are returned, Stock and Roll captures what employee returned the tool and equipment, even if it wasn't their own, what time it was returned, what tool room operator received them back into the tool room, was the tool damaged or declared lost, as a result of tracking at this level, Stock and Roll can provide a complete utilization history by item, person, project, company, work location, work order, and by the user definable fields if you've set them up. And should your company be in the business of renting your tools and equipment, that gives Stock and Roll a complete and accurate set of transactional records to create an invoice for rented and consumed items allowing you to provide your customer with detailed and summary, detailed or summary invoice for both. And least we forget the need to ensure safety and compliance. At the point of issue, Stock and Roll will also prohibit the tool room operator from issuing tools and equipment requiring inspections, calibration, or maintenance. It will also prohibit the tool room operator from issuing a tool that requires specialized training, certifications, to in personnel without those certifications. At the point of return, Stock and Roll will notify the tool room operator if the equipment is due for inspection, calibration, or maintenance and automatically put it in that status so it cannot be issued again until the service has been performed. It will also allow the tool room operator to mark a returned item as damaged and in need of repair or disposable at that point of receipt. In short, if used properly, Stock and Roll is an efficient and effective solution to ensuring safety and compliance. But just because we say it is does not make it so. But being able to show full reports with all the necessary information does. Whether you are interested in inventory, transaction, utilization history, safety and compliance, or billing information, Stock and Roll has the report you need. Having developed in collaboration with our customers over the last 19 years, 27 out-of-the-box standard reports, we believe we have you covered. But if you find a need for an additional one, Stock and Roll allows the users to easily modify an existing report or create one of your own. With an average return on investment for construction, 
tool rental and turnaround companies of less than six months, Stock and Roll is an outstanding investment. So let Persona and Stock and Roll help your company significantly reduce tool theft and loss, speed up the issue and return process, ensure safety and compliance, reduce consumption of consumable items through better tracking and usage, bill on a timely basis, but most importantly, increase customer satisfaction by avoiding project delays caused by not having the right, safe, tools and equipment in the right place at the right time. To accelerate the process even further, Stock and Roll by Design was built to support barcoding and RFID. So no matter how long the line is for tools, it's going to be fast and efficient. As part of our solution, we offer a package starter kit that includes the Honeywell Industrial Wireless Scanner, a Honeywell barcode printer with media, and the Topaz Rugged Signature Capture Device. Let me not fail to mention, though, that Stock and Roll is set up to be backed up to our cloud environment where you, and only as you allow, your customers can access reports. Your back office team can also perform billing for all of your projects from our cloud environment. In addition, our cloud solution provides an integration point for our customers wishing to perform the procurement and billing function in their existing accounting and procurement applications. And last but not least, the cloud backup creates redundancy for your operations should the worst happen and your computer in the field becomes damaged. You can easily download the database and restore to a new instance of stock and roll on another computer and continue operations. At this point, I'm going to pass control to Rick Gonzalez, our chief architect for stock and roll, to do a quick demo. Rick, when you're ready, please take it away. I see your screen, Rick. You might be on mute. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, hello, my name is Rick Gonzalez, and as Glenn said, I am the chief architect for Stock and Roll. So Glenn briefly talked about what Stock and Roll was designed to do, but now let's see it in action. So Stock and Roll is a Windows-based program that can run standalone or in a network environment. Like most software, the application is menu-driven. There's icons on the icon bar that can take you to most of the frequently used Windows, as well as them having some keyboard shortcut keys. The startup dashboard, as you see here, shows some important information that can be useful when first starting out your day. It also shows some, use, uh, some of the user preferences that have been set for the system. So this demonstrates Stock and Roll's abilities. Let's look at the day of a typical tool, tool room operator. So we start the day, maybe a little after morning coffee, booting up the system, and the operator starts seeing the first wave of workers coming up to the counter to get the tools needed for the day. That's his cue to open the issue screen, which we'll do using the quick key. So the first order of business, once the first employee comes up, is to enter an employee's number. We're going to utilize Stockroll's abilities to use barcodes and scan his barcode. So the system validates the number and the employee's data appears on the screen. Certain pieces of the data can't be captured for any issues like where the employee is going to be working for the day or work order information. The system, as Glenn pointed out before, does have other uh, five user fields that can capture any type of data that we don't specifically have uh, a user field for. So the operator at this point grabs the items and again using the barcode technology starts scanning the items to be issued. So today Harry needs an impact wrench. Uh, he also needs a hacksaw. Which and he needs a couple cans of WD-40. So once the operator has the items that he needs, he can click the save button. He gets a confirmation to issue the items. 
And then now we see another one of Stockerl's capabilities, which is to, to do a signature capture. So once Harry gives us his best John Hancock, the operator captures his signature, and there you go, the issue ticket. Shows all the items captured for this particular transaction, uh, including obviously the items. And of course, at the bottom, we've got the signature capture. So at this point, the operator could print, export, or at this point, close the window and be ready for the next employee. So now, next one comes up, next scan of curse. So, ah, Mr. Martinez, good to see you today. So at this point, tell them he needs a man lift for the day. So, being that they're outside and there's no barcode to scan, the operator could at this point type in a unit number for the man lift if he knows it, or he could also type in the material number. And at this point, the system recognizes that this particular material number is unit coded and each piece of equipment has a unique number. So it asks the operator which one does he want to issue. After selecting the proper one, now, the employee asks for a medium respirator. But upon scanning the barcode, a message appears that states he's not certified to use this type of item. The operator can now click on the certifications tab on the screen to see which one, if any, he's certified to use. He sees that he can use the small mask. It also states that his man lift certification is about to expire, and that's information that you can relate to the employee. So now let's go ahead and issue the correct mask. That would help if I do that. So now the next thing he asks is for a harness. Oh, another message. So this time the system alerts the operator that the item scan cannot be issued because it requires service. And in this case, it needs to be inspected. Uh, it seems somebody forgot to set this item out on the service file. So the good thing Stocker was there to help him out. So now let's go ahead and scan a harness that could be issued. So for now, this is what Martinez, Mr. Martinez needs to um, work throughout the day. And we continue um, save the process, capture his signature, the issue, issue ticket, close, and we're off to the next guy. Now, we see an employee come up, and he doesn't have a barcode on him, so he must be pretty new. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and ask for his user ID or employee number. And so the system validates that he does not exist in the system. So that's not a big issue. We could go ahead and add him on the fly. All we need now is just his uh, printed information, like obviously his name, what company he works for, his supervisor, departments, craft if available. And at this point, we could even print out a barcode. So that way, the next, guy, next time he comes up to the window, we could scan that barcode and we don't have to add him in there. So once it's, he's in the system, now he's ready to get items issued out to him. I think today he's really just going to need a radio. So we're just going to go ahead and scan that, process it, and off to the next one we go. So as you can see, at this point, this process could take as long as it takes to get these items and these employees off and running for their day of work. So let's recap the issue process in Stocker Roll. So it's designed to be fast and easy, capable of issuing many items quickly so workers are not stuck waiting in lines for the tools. It also shows the safety compliance capabilities of learning operators of employee certifications and not allowing items to be issued if they don't have the proper ones. It also shows services side, which can prevent operators from issuing items that require service before their next use. That's an important feature to help prevent accidents. We even showed how it handles exceptions like employees not in the system or even using a material number to find the right barcode to issue. So the system has the ability to assign items to employees for those items that are going to be used long term. For those items, they could utilize the assignment screen that's very similar to the issue screen. So as we all know the saying, what goes up must come down. 
But in this world, it, what goes out must come back in. So let's look at the return process. So to open the return screen, this time we're going to utilize the icon. And at this point, we are ready to go ahead and start returning items. So the first person comes up to the counter. Same process as before. We use the barcode. And we see uh, Mr. Evans is coming back to return his items. So at this point, we could just go ahead and scan the items that he needs to return. And just that simple, we capture a signature very similar to the issue screen. And there's our return ticket, which shows the items being returned. And just like the issue screen, very similar, we go back to the top of the screen to return the next items of the day. Uh, we see Mr. Martinez coming up to the window now. So we we could scan the items. We could use the barcode. We could also, in this screen, utilize the F3 function key, which in this turn would show what that particular employee has outstanding. So now we could go down the list, verify the item, and type in the quantity for the items being returned. So we see the harness, check. We see the man lift outside, check. Ah, but we see the respirator has a little bit of a torn um, strap. So what we can do at this point is mark the item as damaged. We could even add comments to it. And by doing this, it will see, the operator could set this item aside and determine its fate later um, to, you know, whether it needs to be serviced, uh, disposed, or sent back to inventory. But this is something that could be done on the fly and can be done later. So at this point, we are done with this process. We capture the signature. And the return ticket shows the three items that are being returned, but it does show the one that was marked as damaged and even has the notes for it. Oh, and look at here. Now we even have uh, another notification that shows one of those items that were returned is in need of service, and this is something also useful for the operator to know so he could put that item aside and be able to do the service on it later knowing that that item cannot be issued until that is done. All right, so the next person comes up. And it's our newbie, Mr. Caldwell. And we use this barcode that we had printed earlier to go ahead and scan him in. We scan his barcode, but the, the system recognizes that the, for some reason the radio that he brought in is not the same one that got issued out to him earlier. It shows that Mario was issued this particular radio. So at this point, the operator could determine to return this item. And by doing so, it's, it will give credit to Mario Vargas, who originally had it, but it will also have a note that a different employee actually returned it. So that way there's that accountability for this particular transaction. But now he needs to decide, well, what are we going to do with the radio that was issued out to Mr. Caldwell? So by scanning back in, scanning back, scanning him back in, we can hit the F3 and notice that there is the barcode or the radio that was issued out to him. So at this point, they make a determination to go ahead and mark that item as lost, which you can do at this screen. Very similar to the damaged, we select it, and in this point we put a reason, and we could put comments as well. And by doing so, now this is in the system as a lost item, and at that point could be reported on. And also the ticket shows that it was lost as well. So at this point, the operator continues on with his returns for the day. So pretty much in short, we demonstrated again the speed and ease of performing a function, in this case the return. We also showed safety compliance by allowing an operator to mark an item being returned as damaged and by alerting an operator of an opinion service of one of the returned items. 
The system also made sure that an employee was not able to return an item not issued out to him and can mark items as lost. All great functionality to keep your inventory accurate as possible. So now that the rush is over, the operator can now take care of those items that were set aside. So for the items that were marked as damaged, we could go to the damage screen and see a list. After seeing the list, you can double click, and at this point, the operator could determine what he plans to do with this item after inspecting it, whether he wants to just send it back to inventory, send it to repair, or just go ahead and dispose of the item. But he also has a big pile of items that need service. And unfortunately, none of those items can be issued until they are serviced. So let's go ahead and take care of those. To do that, you go under the Activities menu and go to Send to Repair and Services. So at this point, the operator needs to put in a vendor of who is going to perform this service. Now, the vendor could be an in-house vendor that's set up, or it could be a third party. Whichever one, he selects the proper one. He comes down to the box, and we utilize the F3 function key, like we did in returns. And at this point, it shows him all the items that are in need of service. So at this point, he could select whichever ones he wants to go ahead and do that. Now, by selecting this one particular gas monitor that needs service, it shows that it actually has two services associated with it. Now, it will check the one that is required at this very moment, but it will give the operator the option to go ahead, if he so chooses, to select the other service to be done, since he's might, he might as well do it since he's going, going ahead and send it um, to get the other service done. And at this point, you could select all the items that are going to be sent to be serviced. And we're going to go ahead and do all of them. Because at this point, they cannot be issued. Once they're all on a screen and they're ready to be sent out to um, the party um, responsible to do the service, we hit Save, and you can print out as well. So now they're off off to be serviced, which is a good thing because we can't issue them out until they, they get that service before. So now that the vendor has sent those items back, so now we need to get them back into the system so now you could go ahead and issue them out to employees. So to do this, we go under activities, return for repair and services. So again, we could hit our trusty F3 key, and those are the items that were sent out. So at this point, he selects the ones that he plans to return back. In this case, we're going to go ahead and return all of them. Once on the screen, one thing he will need to do is to select whether the service was completed or was not performed. For those items that were completed, you can also associate a labor cost and parts costs as well, which of course will help later to run uh, when you're running reports to find out your cost of uh, repairs and services. For those items that were not completed, those will still go back into inventory, but they will still require that service and will, will not be able or be allowed to be issued out. So at this point, your items are back in. But we still have one more item to kind of take care of, the one that never got the service performed. So at this point, the determination could be made to dispose of an item since apparently it cannot be fixed. To do that, we go under Activities, Inactivate Inventory. So at this point, you could scan the barcode, and it will ask you what kind of Inact, uh, inactive type you're going to use, whether you're going to lose, uh, make it lost or dispose. Uh, you type in the employee of possibly a maybe who the supervisor authorizes disposal or maybe just the operator that's doing this. Give it a reason and then of course you could always put comments. And then at this point, once you save it, then that item is disposed, 
and made inactive in the system. So at this point, uh, we've shown many transactions um, that obviously deal with your inventory. One that we haven't talked about is how to replenish that inventory. So let's say a truck arrives with some new items and the operator needs to add them into the, uh, into the inventory. So to do that, we go under activities and receiving. Now we do have two options to do this. We have, um, excuse me, we have the receive by stock item which basically just receives items based on the material number. But we also have the ability to receive using a requisition. The requisition could be created in stock roll that at that point could interact with an ERP system and your purchasing system uh, to be able to do that and, and at that point track them by those individual requisitions and be able to know which ones have been fully received, which ones have been partially received. Uh, but for this demonstration, we're going to go ahead and use the stock item option. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and add items that are going to be added to inventory. So we go ahead and type in a material number. And so the next thing I'll ask is for a quantity. Upon putting the quantity, the system recognizes that the item is a unit coded item, which requires a unique identifying number for each individual piece of equipment. So at this point, the operator could manually enter those unit numbers, or if set up properly, you could allow the system to automatically generate the next numbers, uh, next unique numbers. We also have the ability to add a unit cost, and this is for those customers that would like to actually have uh, uh, an inventory value within stock rule. Most customers also uh, use other systems to do that, so if that's the case, then you could go ahead and just leave that as zero. And now we're going to continue adding more items. We're going to add a hex, some hex off, let's say five, and because this is a bulk item, only quantity. There's no unit numbers for this item. So at this point, you could enter as many items as you need to be uh, to add to your inventory. Uh, once done, you hit your save, you could print, and done. Those items are now into your inventory and are, be, and are ready to go ahead and be issued out. So as you can see, this is your typical screen that you'll be using on a daily basis to be able to replenish your inventory, but what happens at the start of a job? where you have to enter hundreds or even thousands of records to enter. So stock and roll has you covered in that respect. So under utilities, we have an import data wizard. And here, you can select what you're going to import, like employees, your stock catalog, your inventory. And we can use various types of files, like, the, like a CSV, text, or the most commonly used, Excel. And then what about barcodes? We've been demonstrating we could use barcodes to be able to scan employee uh, badges or your uh, unit numbers. So stock and roll also has that covered. Under utilities, barcode labels, this is where you can scan or print out your barcodes, whether one at a time, a few at a time, or even all of them. And you can print them to your selected printer and even different sizes. So, so far it's been a pretty busy day here in the tool room, but now your boss comes up and says, well, what have you done today? So Stock and Roll has a very robust reporting mechanism. Stock and Roll's report module has almost 30 canned reports and has been developed over 19 years of experience working in the industry. From inventory to service and transactional data and even billing, Stock and Roll has the ability to give you the reports you need. And not only does Stock and Roll already come with reports, they can be customized. So let's take the outstanding report that we're looking at here today. For starters, it gives you the ability to select different types of data if you're looking for something specific.
So the though the reports come pre-configured, you have a variety of ways to make them your own. So you can easily resize columns. You can even change the header names. And you can even hide columns. You can even also add groups so that way you can have summary of certain groups. And the grouping could either be per page or you could have them all in one page with the, their own summaries. So as you can see, very robust tool and very easily to be re, uh, configured to your liking. Now, if, of course, a report, you need the ability to print, which we do have. But we also have the ability to export the data into a PDF format or into Excel. So, as you can see, many reports to report from, billing being one of them. But to be able to view the billing data, of course, we have to populate that. So let's look at how that's done. Under modules, we have billing. So at this point, we would like to go ahead and uh, add or view our catalog rates because what the billing does is it grabs all your issues and return transactions, applies rates to them based on the date range, and spits out an invoice. So in this screen, you could easily see the rates that are in the system for your rental items as well as your consumable items, the sale price. And you could configure them obviously as a standard rate or we could also do it by project or by company. So that, that way you could have flexibility to have specific rates for certain of your customers. So now that rates are in the system, let's go ahead and create an invoice. So the operator at this point selects the date range that he wants to report from. He could select the start time of the day of the 24-hour cycle, which typically is midnight, but you have the flexibility to change that. You could select the rate options, whether he's going to use just a standard rate or he wants to use his company rates or project rates. For the unicoded items, we could either bill them by transaction or you could bill them by a 24-hour cycle. Uh, you could bill uh, those unicoders once within that 24-hour cycle. And then you also have the ability to give credits on all your consumable items. Once you've selected the items he needs to create the invoice, it verifies that it went through and got all the data necessary, and now he can review that invoice. So upon reviewing, it kind of shows them all the data that's going to be part of that invoice. It also kind of notifies the operator of, part of, of some uh, issues that might be missing. The ones in yellow tent here are missing a, a rate. So the operator at this point can determine if that's correct or if that's a mistake, and he could go back to the rate screen and add a rate and rerun the billing. He could also manipulate or change the work order in case there was an error uh, when they created the issue so they could put in the proper work order. Once all items have been verified and they're ready to save the history, you click on the save the history and you go into your billing invoice screen. Where in, there, in here you could view your billing invoice by three different ways, by either project, company, or work order. And you could either view the full details of it or you could view just the summary. Now one thing Glenn discussed as well is the ability to upload the database into our cloud service where you can run reports off of all the sites um, that are utilizing Stock and Roll. To do that, you can go to our web page get a login credential for the for your database and log in and be able to see all the data from all your sites going down under reports and you even have the ability 
to run billing here for all your sites as well. So what we demonstrated today was just a small portion of what stock and roll can do. But it's, as you can see, there's, it's very flexible, it's very easy, and it's, and it's generally very uh, useful for the issues and returns and the speed of use as well as all the safety compliance information needed to run your day-to-day -day business. So at this point, I'd like to give it back to Glenn. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. Let me uh, get back into presenter mode here. Um, again, thank you, Rick, for the demonstration of stock and roll. Uh, at this point, I'd like to take questions if anybody has any. Okay, I did have some questions come in during the session. <clears throat> um, excuse me. The first question that I have is how many records can I import? It's unlimited. Okay, uh, the next question that I have here is how many users can log into the application? As many as you need. That's unlimited as well. Um, stock and roll is the subscription is done on a um, concurrent user basis, so you only need as many licenses as you have concurrent users. So if you're running a, for example, a three-shift operation, and but you only have one person working the tool room at that particular, any one shift, then you only need one license, and they basically just log in as themselves. It's not on a named user license basis. Okay, the next question I have is, can I back up the database? As Rick showed, um, the system is set up automatically uh, to back up to our cloud environment where you can actually run reports. Um, it also creates that continuity of operations should, like I said in my presentation, the worst happen and your um, laptop or desktop or whatever you're using in the field becomes uh, corrupted or disabled in some fashion, you're able to basically log in, load stock and roll onto a new computer, download your database, and continue your operation. Okay, the next question that I have here is, uh, can stock and roll be used in an unmanned scenario? Yes, it can. It requires uh, some additional technology. Specifically, it is a RFID-only implementation. Um, with depending on the level of security you want around your equipment, it requires biometrics um, on the access portals to the tool rooms so that we can ensure that the person has, we've got the right person entering the tool room, collecting the equipment, and leaving, and we're, but we're reading it all automatically. If you're not that interested in the security, you can still use a badging system or an access control and give that, and we just track basically what's going based upon who entered their uh, PIN number, if you will. Okay, the next question that came in is, can my customers run reports? Yes, they can. Again, uh, the cloud environment is set up where you get to decide what reports you want to make available to them uh, so that they can actually log, go, basically go out to any browser, go to stockandroll.net, you provide them as uh, once you license, obviously, you provide them a login to our environment, and they'll be able to run the reports that you uh, make available to them through permissions. Okay, uh, the next question is, is it possible to issue a tool from one tool room and then return it to a different tool room? Yes, it is, and if you're in a connected um, environment, where both tool rooms are sharing the same database, then the actual transfer of the tool from one location to the other, other automatically occurs. Okay, next question that came in is, uh, can stock and roll be used for on-site consignment supply trailers? Can stock and roll be used for on-site consignment supply trailers? Yes, stock and roll can be used 
to manage consignment inventory. Um, you know, it's all about whether you're billing for it. Typically, you would set those as a zero dollar item and you're just tracking the ins and outs of that inventory for them. Okay, um, and the next question that I have is can stock and roll issue, track, or print hot and cold work permits? So stock and roll is not a permitting system. Um, we found in working with the industry that all of our customers and their customers, which is typically the refineries, petrochemical, chemical companies, um, and the like, they have their own existing permitting system that is controlled by their operators in those facilities. So it really made no sense for us to put permitting into stock and roll. So no, it does not manage the issue um, of hot and cold work permits. Okay, do we have any other questions? Well, Glenn, that's all okay. the questions I have right now. Okay, if that concludes our uh, questions, I'd like to thank each of you for taking time out of your busy day to get to know more about Persona Systems and our stock and roll tool and equipment management suit. Solution. I'd also like to thank Honeywell for hosting this event. Um, hopefully you've found this webinar beneficial. If you have any questions or would like additional information on Stock and Roll or Persona Systems, please do not hesitate to contact us. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.